this is the entrance. We're coming in now to Cordin Temple 3, one of five that were found in the area up on this high plateau near the Great Harbour of Malta. So behind me here is Cordin 3. This is the Eastern Temple. This goes back to 7,340 BC. If we take on board Lenny Ridgett's alignments with Sirius, and whereas the main area over there, the main part of the temple, goes back all the way back to 8,400 BC, according to Sirius alignment, if correct, with Lenny Ridgett's research. Also, officially, the dating of this is really old anyway. It goes back to 3,800 BC. And we must remember, this is one of five Cordin Temple. Cordin 1 is only about 500 meters or 1500 feet that way, uh, but most of it's been destroyed or built over by the, the early British settlers and it's an industrial area. This one got preserved and uh, this is all that's really left of it. There's some interesting features inside we'll look at, but you know, we're looking at regardless of Lenny Ridgick's research, this is one of the oldest temples in the whole of the Maltese Islands. So this is the East Temple, and this is the one that dates back, according to Lenny Rujic, and our serious dating is 7340 BC. So that's this particular one here. Then the main temple we have behind there, this goes back to 8400 BC, according once again to Lenny Rujic's dating system. So this is what's left of the West Temple. Now, there's not too much of it left. This is one of the later additions, they believe. Whereas the main temple is just behind there with the beautiful trough, they call it, which has got all these remarkable scoop marks in it. And we can see some interesting little features here. I'll just show you. We have examples of like the kind of mini cut mark um, selections. So you see that there? Just behind that large stone in the middle there that is you can see just about some of the dimples the remains of a style we find all over Malta so that is intriguing we've got a huge stone below it there it's all carved shaped and the forecourt here you can see the curved forecourt but you can also also see this kind of almost like a pavement of stones making up all the entrance area which is unique there's nothing else quite like this so this would have been a whole paved almost like a kind of mosaic if you like area of the entrance to the site and then we move in to the kind of main temples the main temple over here and it's got like a kind of a almost like a blocking stone there you've got large kind of hole stones here that faces actually towards the kind of summer solstice you've got smaller ones down there even over this side this was once a hole stone a port hole stone you've got smaller ones down there possibly were wooden poles and actually yeah it's quite large stone construction uh, we have some aerial shots of this we can show you as well so you can get a sense of the the shaping of the entire site and we have entrances to other temples small areas sort of monoliths and this famous stone trough which was actually marking the entrance to a temple so this was this was in the this wasn't added later which some people suggest this was here and this was bought from over a kilometer away to this site because it's a specific type of limestone now what it was used for we don't know currently we have loads of f tiny tiny fish in there you can just about see them in the middle kind of the middle kind of scoop there but these look like they're scooped they're almost like the beginnings of cart ruts but these are just this is the most fascinating kind of megalithic aspect of this site so here we are inside the center of the main temple at Cordin. and this is private access visit we get we have to get heritage mold so they come out and let us in it's not open to the public very unique site one of five that were in the area overlooking the great harbor this is the highest point in the area we're not too far from tarshan and uh, the hypogeum really but there's this interesting feature here which they say is a trough or was used for grinding corn but we don't know about that it seems like it was something much more profound uh, and jj is going to give a give a view on it 
uh, as well because there's something more mysterious as this was bought from a kilometer away uh, it's a specific type of limestone they wanted for this particular spot and it could have been used for charging seeds it could have been used for sacraments or it could be another purpose jj ainsworth everybody so we're just saying that these are no doubt libations so this was where oils and different uh, even sacred what they deemed as sacred water and other things may have been placed in here sacraments could have been a sacred washing area before you go into the temple for initiations and ceremonies because it was found at the entrance to this particular temple and like we've seen at other temples that might have something to do with libation um, because or an offering of some sort but we don't know nobody knows for sure but it makes sense if it follows the pattern of the other sites where they have um, carved out of the stone next to the entrances um, bowls bowl shapes so this one is really unique though I've never seen one like it before um, a lot of people call it a trough I would disagree highly it's obviously something you know it wouldn't be in the middle of a temple if it was a trough or probably for grinding corn even I wouldn't agree with that I think it's something more uh, symbolic ritual So we have some very interesting features here at Cordin Three Temple here in Malta. We have the great trough, they call it, which is more like a libation bowl, a multi-purpose libation bowl. We have these beautiful shaped temples from above, like the shape of the goddess, like we find all over Malta and Gozo. And this would have had a roof as well, as well as a stunning pavement out the front. So there's lots of features here we find at other sites, but also some unique ones. So it's been fascinating to visit this site on a private access visit. We do this just for our Megalithomania group with Heritage Malta. And you can join us here again for another private access visit to Cordin 3 in March 2024. So check out the Megalithomania website. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you next time Megalithomaniacs.